want to see they want to listen to what you're talking mm. about and everything um Philip, Philip, yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you for doing this um alan put us together mm -hmm. yeah. because um he's your employer would you call him that or partner what is he yeah so he is my employer at the moment but the reason we got in touch is because he was looking for somebody to take over for his mm -hmm. business so mm -hmm. um i first contacted one of his guys i was looking for some extra work and it was funny the next day he's like yeah well we need another coach but actually we also are looking for someone to take over the company so it's kind of totally unexpected how long have you been working with him uh, so I wasn't working with him before that. So you I, you were you I were not. I was oh. not. I was totally uninvolved. Okay. Uh, with Alan. So this was beginning of or end of two thousand nineteen. Okay. Kind of maybe late summer. Right. And I was gonna try and like get into it right away, okay. but uh, it was kind of a few things happened, and of course with the COVID come like came, and that made me well everything a little bit slowed down, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. decided to push it back. Have you been playing tennis all your life? I mean, how long have you yeah. been playing tennis? Tell so, me about that. Yeah, I started as a competitive skier and then moved to tennis when I was about seven or eight years old mm -hmm. and uh, was competitive already at 11, 12. I was on the national team under 14 in Canada. Oh, in Canada, okay. Yeah. So you're from where? From Canada, Calgary. Calgary, yeah. okay. So you grew up there. Tell me a little bit about your family. Okay, background. so I was born in Poland. Okay. My parents are born Polish. You were born in Poland? Yeah, yeah. Can you speak Polish? Yes. Yeah. You actually, what? Yeah, yeah. My parents, uh, I mean, we all immigrated. My parents, aunts, uncles. How old were you when you... When I was you just had... a baby, though. I was one. Yeah, okay. Was one but your old. parents made sure that you learned Polish. Well, they didn't speak English, so they were complete immigrants, you know, to Canada uh, from Poland. And uh, they were learning English, too. And I had a brother who's older and a sister who's older. So you was, have a brother that's yeah, older? Yeah. Okay. How many years difference? Three. Three years okay. older brother and six years older sister. You're the youngest? Yeah. Okay, so you got, they didn't do anything with you, you got to do whatever you wanted. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So I had a totally different life than my sister who moved when she was seven as a Polish immigrant not speaking English uh, to parents who were just trying to find a way to survive mm -hmm. where by the time I was a teenager, you know, they could send me to tennis tournaments and things like that. So mm -hmm. it was kind of a different upbringing. Mm -hmm. are, they, are your parents both alive and well? Yeah. Uh, no, my mother is no longer alive. Oh. Uh, three years ago she passed away. Okay. Yeah. And Actually, you, last time I was in Canada was for her funeral. But your parents stayed together. They stayed together to the end. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So. Uh, so what did your father do? Yeah, he was always uh, kind of he by trade he was an engineer, like mm -hmm. electrical instrumentation engineering. But he was always uh, kind of just doing kind of everything like when we were in poland he would go to sweden and import things calculators from germany and this kind of stuff and mm -hmm. uh he was importing cars from the u.s for a while from uh from to canada and then he got into like uh real estate kind of um he was building houses and renting them he had a few places and they had some tenants you know it's very interesting now and now i understand your reactions to everything i was telling you prior to this because like you're kind of it's like Okay, you understood it. You got you got it. It wasn't <laughs> okay. like I was. You weren't you. It didn't um, surprise you. I was just telling. Yeah, he's, yeah, I can see that. Like kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, know, like, you got you know, you got you, had, yeah, yeah, you yeah. understood it. It mm -hmm. was interesting. I could see that in you, and I, now I got it. Yeah, yeah. Because wonder why is he being? You were being reserved, but some people aren't. Uh huh. You know, and they have a. You can feel a different vibe. Yours was like seemed normal. Well, yeah. I mean, especially yeah, nice. in Japan, where people are very. Um, Kind of they have one career and they're really focused on that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and yeah i grew up with my dad being kind of all over doing business with lots of different things so i'm ex interested in that and myself too i have a few yeah. different things going on so. so what's he doing now your father he's building a boat <laughs> he's, he's building a how boat. old is your father 70. oh okay so yeah. he's just right there with me same yeah, yeah. baby boomer yeah so he comes. built his own house he built his own camper van now he's building a boat so he's always building what type of boat a, a sailboat, sailboat? A sailboat yeah. how long how big I think it's 36 feet. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So, well, he, he has, of course he has help. He has people helping. No, he's doing it all himself, yeah. I think he wanted to hire someone even for a while because he's getting tired, but, because it's a lot of sanding. He's doing the fiberglass and vacuum bagging it and then sanding it down and, uh, you know, all the kind of structural parts of it. He said that he wants to make it unsinkable and he's really into, uh, like those worldwide races, like mm -hmm. the world uh, 
America's Cup and stuff okay, like America. that. Okay, So he did that before he was a boater? Yeah, so he was mm -hmm. uh, like a competitive sailor, like as a kid in Poland, like a teenager in college. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I met my mom, it was like at a beach town. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we grew up like windsurfing and sailing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, so my dad was, he was really into sailboats. Yeah, right. it's a nice building, one, his dream right. boat. Yeah. You take me through all of your aspects <laughs> because <laughs> there's, okay, a lot, there's a lot That's going so on. interesting. Yeah. So, Philip, you, you said you played tennis since you were a kid. Yeah. And it's your love for the sport. Did, how did he contact you? How did Alan get you? Alan, so, yeah, okay, so I was a really competitive player. And then during high school, I had injuries and was up and down with my kind of whether I'm going to continue. I almost quit. I played other sports, basketball, volleyball, skateboarding, and these kind of things in high school. And then knew I had the chance to go play college tennis, like that... that there's this opportunity to continue playing rather than quitting. Because in Canada, other countries, you have 18, you either go pro or you go to college and don't do sports anymore. We don't have that kind of mm -hmm. NCAA mm -hmm. thing. So I had the opportunity, got lucky enough to get recruited to a small school in the US uh, because I didn't have that many rankings. And then so I had to work really hard in my freshman, sophomore year, get, have some good results and got recruited to transfer into a bigger college. So I was really lucky to have the big and small college up in my chance. Mm -hmm. um, man, yeah, I mean, the long stories, but uh, so I was, end up in Japan and tennis was always my way of kind of work, you know, coaching and yeah. you know, I could travel, I love traveling. So I've right. been in lots of different countries and uh, I was always working. So I moved to Tokyo and I was like looking for tennis or for work. Right. And but wait, wait, what, what made you, how old were you when you first came here? I was 27. Okay, why did you come here? So after, so after finishing competitive tennis, I really got into other sports that I couldn't do as much because okay. of risk of injury and time commitment. So I got really into skiing and surf, like uh, windsurfing. Mm -hmm, surfing. Mm -hmm. And did a big trip in Europe, lived a year and a half in France and Spain, surfing and skiing. And then decided, oh, I want to try another continent, do the same, and come to Japan for skiing. Because okay. uh, it's really famous for the snow. So I came here for the reason of working at a resort, ski resort. Okay. And, and how'd that turn out? Oh, it was really good. Yeah, it's, it's still one of my favorite places in Japan is Hakuba. Yeah. So you went up to Hakuba? You went to yeah, Hakuba? Yeah, yeah. Over to Hakuba, not up yeah, to... Yeah, yeah. You went to Hakuba, and so you were there for how long? So it was... Um, Wait, what, what year was this? 2000, 2010. 2010. Because there was a guy there before that I knew, his name Terry. Okay. And he had a place in Hakuba, and he used in the summer, they did tennis, and in the wintertime, they did skiing and everything. Oh, because I was totally not involved in tennis and Hakuba. Okay, they had, yeah. that, they had that in the summertime, they had yeah, yeah. tennis. Because, yeah, I was there during the winter season, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Working at a bar, working at a bar for a while, and then eventually working for a guy who was, I was chopping wood for his furnace, and just skiing during the day, and jumping when I came back. <laughs> yeah, so that was like my, paying for my room and board. Wow. But it must have been pretty, it's interesting to be that far out in the country and... Well, I mean, to me... Yeah, you end up there was Canada. I mean, right? no, 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 but I... Traveling, I mean, I backpack through Central America. Mm -hmm. I've been to 50 different countries, kind of on very little... But did you do all this as a model or...? No, 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 this just as a nothing, as a traveler. Just to travel? Yeah, yeah. The modeling thing happened just when I came to Japan. Okay. Yeah. And okay. how long did you do that? The modeling? Uh, almost, I mean, from the... For when I came to Japan to now. Oh, so, so you do it even there. when you're in Hakuba? You were, no, 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 so that's kind of... That's what I'm saying, yeah. Okay, so I was in Hakuba for the winter and then came to Tokyo for the summer mm -hmm. and started coaching, but also signed up for freelance agencies. So that's when I started and I had an agency offer to sponsor me when my visa ran up. And okay. that's kind of when it got more serious. Right. And, and what, kind of, wife there. what kind of modeling? Um, at the time, because I'm so into sports, I was doing a lot of sports-related things because, you know, I'm really active. Mm -hmm. I was really fit. I was training a lot. So, yeah, I mean, there's fashion, there's like uh, cameras and cars and... But they have runway, they have... Yeah, you runway, do, you I was can... never doing runway because okay. I'm a little too tall for Japanese brands. Right, right. And they also have the movies, then you can do the video. Yeah, I didn't... I, well, so yours was always still. Commercial. So, no, it was always commercials. Like still for... Commercials, right. Like the commercials called, you know, like a, a family guy or a business guy. So you're doing, you're doing camera. magazine covers, that kind of stuff. Well, or were you doing like commercials, TV really commercials? commercials? TV okay. commercials and, uh, yeah, like catalogs and stuff. So like what would we have seen you in? Something that we'd remember that people say, yeah, I must have seen you in that. I mean, I've done a couple of Uniqlo things. Uniqlo, did you? Yeah, yeah. And when, when, when did you do those? 
Well, the most notable one was with my daughter. Uh, she, oh, so it's been recent then. I mean, she's five now, so right when she was born, she was six months okay. old, and I was holding her, and we we're right. on a billboard. Yeah. Where was the billboard? Where? In Shinjuku. In Shinjuku? Mm. One of those real big ones. A big one, yeah, yeah. I had a friend that was doing modeling work, and he said, I want to be in Akasaka, a billboard there is what he said he wanted to do, and he ended up doing it. And, by, and on all the trains, he was made up as if he'd just been in a boxing fight, and he didn't win necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> he looked bad, but he was in the Indiana on the gloves. Yeah. And he did it. And he was a college student. He was a college student working with us. At a, he was going to Todai, oh, yeah. but he's from Harvard. Mm. And uh, a real sharp guy. Mm. But I, he said he wanted to do it, and he did it. Cool. He ended up doing it. Cool. So did you find that lucrative? Because some people have problems when they're in the modeling business. Uh, Sometimes I hear all kinds of stories. It pro wasn't income. enough. I mean... Yes, like I was successful enough that I, you know, and at the time I was single, not single, but didn't have family to raise and, you mm -hmm. know, I was used to traveling and not and being on a low budget. So it was okay, but I had enough success. I got popular with some good things and because I was, I had the sports thing, I had the business thing. I was just at an age where I could do like dad jobs, you know, I like kids. So it was uh, kind of, I was in a lot of different categories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what were some of your favorites? What did you enjoy doing? When you were modeling, see the thing I enjoyed the most was actually when we would go on location out in the like in the mountains or at the beach, and we'd be like early morning on top of a mountain, and and the the whole crew said, like, "We're so sorry, it's so cold and it's early and it's such a hard day." I'm like, "Oh, I did this on my free time, <laughs> so you know." To and me, you enjoyed was, that. I'm getting paid to do something I would do, like to a place I'd like to visit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. And you said you met your wife through modeling? Yeah, she's a dancer. Yeah. So how? So what were you doing? It was doing? a music video. Okay. Yeah, so she was choreographing and dancing the music video, and I was just like one of the guys in the video. Right. Yeah. And she said, I like you, and then you... No. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of got introduced through the crew, like, because she was working with that team for a while, and they knew she was single, and just kind of... Just to make a joke, you know, like, ah, oh, here, my dancer's single, like, you should meet her. And But I was just leaving. Mm -hmm. I was really leaving Japan, like, a week later. Was, to go where? Uh, I was done. My visa was done. I was leaving Japan. I was just going traveling. Uh, and to did Vietnam. I was going to Vietnam. Did you? I did, yeah. So we, when I left Japan, we were not a couple. Like, it was just uh, kind of, we exchanged numbers. We had dinner together twice. So it was even... Yeah, there's a whole bunch. Like I, okay, got, right. I, got, I got hit by, a, I was riding my bus, got hit by a taxi uh, before our second date. In Japan? In Japan. Okay. I was going to sell my bike that day because I was leaving Japan for good a week later. I had no mm. intention of coming back. And uh, I canceled the date and she was like, she thought I was just blowing her off. And then I sent a selfie. Were you hospitalized? I was in the hospital. I got four stitches. Yeah. What happened? I was just... No, I mean, I mean, what, what happened? What kind of damage did you Oh, get? I got hit on the side, so I fell over, and I was wearing glasses, like a metal rim glasses that cut my, like, above Okay, my okay, so and that was so it. Okay, yeah. okay. So I was, like, beat up. Like, my whole one side was, like, all bruised Bruise, up. okay. Yeah. So she just said, uh, like, just come over, and my mom will cook you some food, and then I'll take you to the bus station, because I was living in Hakuba. Wait, wait, now let me... Wait, wait. Yeah. You had the accident, but she thought she'd blown her off for the date. Yeah. And how long was it after that that you contacted her? No, I just sent her a selfie of me with bandages around my head. And then she's like, oh, wow, like you're kind of beat up. So okay, let's okay. Just, just come in my house and my family will cook you something to eat, you know? This is was, in Hakuba? No, this is in Tokyo. Oh, in Tokyo. So okay. I just came, I was just having to be in Tokyo for like a, like one of the last, my last jobs. Like okay, should. right. So it was uh, interesting. So she, her... I met her mom on the second date and I thought it was like, what kind of crazy person invites you to their family, you know, some strange foreigner in bandages. Right. But uh, yeah, so that was it. She, I met her family. I felt comfortable with them and it was kind of the beginning of our little like... Uh, how long were you guys, how long did you know each other before you tied the knot? Before we got married? Mm -hmm. uh, four years. No, oh, four. no. Four years? Four years, yeah. Okay, four years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, we, we were together. We got married on the same day of that uh, music video that we met on four years later. Planned to do that? Well, we chose that date, yeah. That oh, that's neat. Kind of, yeah, that's, yeah. What date is that? Uh, January 14th. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you just celebrated. Yeah. How many years would it be now? We are five years in. No, six. Six, six years. years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't mess around and having kids either. You no. So we <laughs> had, uh, yeah, a year. We got married in January. 
My daughter was born. You know she's going to see this. So. No, no. It was in <laughs> February. <laughs> she, my daughter was born February of the next year. Okay. No. <laughs> no, it wasn't the first. Was it the first year or second year? We were already married. I don't remember. It was half a year okay, or a okay. year and a half. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. So it was kind of yeah. a decision like that we wanted to start having kids. Oh, that's yeah. neat. Yeah. We that's were neat. kind of on our own and had our own place. And that's good. That's, that's good. good. And so, so now you say, you said, you, you told me you live in Ogikubo? No, uh, Ikebukuro. Ikebukuro, Ikebukuro, yeah. okay, Ikebukuro. So. And you're enjoying it out there. It's not with her parents? No, no. Okay, we have our own in place. her own place, okay. Her mom lives nearby, yes. so she helps. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. So it's There's a very no good situation. She helps yeah, us a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and your wife, is she's working still? Yeah, so she's still, still dancing. Tours. Still? I mean, she had a 20th anniversary tour last, you know, ended in December last year. I bet she knows some people that I know that are in that industry. But anyway, she, what kind of dance? She's a top dancer. <laughs> I know she knows people that I probably know. Okay, probably yeah, is that right? <laughs> so yeah, she's in, so she understands. So she's very kind of free, like with her schedule. Sometimes really big projects, really late jobs, and so when we we're doing the when I was doing more modeling, it was like that. But you know mm -hmm. now I'm getting more into the tennis and right. she also teaches dance. Of course, she's mm -hmm. a professional that has classes. Mm -hmm. Um, so she's also like a teacher, you know, and yeah. uh, so we're uh, kind of very similar wow. in that way. So That's she supports nice. me with, she trusts that I can do a good job with the coaching and stuff. So what are your plans? Like you're going to do the tennis and what, yeah. what are your plans with the tennis? I know you're going to... No, I really want to, you know, continue what Alan's been doing and grow it up, you know, because he's been here for 35 years and uh, mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. like the fixture of he tennis is. and the international community. There's no doubt about it. That's yeah. for sure. And uh, he's been so solid and I mean, he's, it's a fun job, you know, and he has guys working for him for like 15 years and, you know, that's something I want to do. I want to have, give people a chance to raise their families right. through tennis and like yeah. kind of be part of that yeah. and um, grow the community because I really like the sport. I still like mm -hmm. playing a lot. It's obvious. And when I watch you teach, like I said, I was telling Alan the other day because yeah. I was watching you through the window and I mm -hmm. said, he really likes what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Because the people are, you know, they're, they're brought to people. You get them in your orbit. Mm -hmm. And it was very easy to see that. They enjoy what they're doing and you enjoy what you're doing with them. Mm -hmm. And it just, it just multiplies. They come, they come because they want to be there. And that makes a big difference than yeah. the people that come because they feel like they have to and they want to get their money's worth. Yeah. These people are there because they love it. Yeah. And it's good. I'm glad to hear that. Like, I'm yeah. really... So I sometimes I feel I care too much about like that they gotta get better at tennis, you know. Right. Not, they're not just there to get better at tennis. It's yeah. a whole environment, a community, of right, friends, right. and sport right. and stuff. And sometimes I get too into the details of it, and they're like, "Okay, we get it," you know. <laughs> Let me try and get this one in my way. <laughs> well, they love you. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. Because you had them playing game. You had them playing it. They were playing doubles today. Yeah, yeah, all the time. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So I try and add like kind of technical stuff strategic stuff okay. and just let them play right and i know it's hard you know when you have to play and just win a point you know mm -hmm. and then like in your head it's like oh, i'm supposed to grip like this and this and this and so kind of you want to let the your kind of skills come out in the play part right. without it like uh you know it become more subconscious instead of right. being on the front but right. i always like many times like just be quiet Phil. stop saying so just let it go yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah what do you find some of the what are some of the 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 issues that you really want to get better at dealing with in tennis? Well, we mentioned this earlier with uh, the kids' behavior. <laughs> yeah. Because the, exactly what you're talking about adults is they want to be there and they appreciate that I'm trying to help and them. And the kids don't want to be there? <laughs> they don't appreciate as much that I want to help them because they don't care about their tennis. They care about their friends. And, as you know, generally they, they like tennis, but they don't maybe understand why or they don't mm. realize that getting better at it is going to be more fun. Mm. Well, what would, you do, what would you give them? How could you tell them what would make it more fun? I mean, you understand what I'm saying? What, what, wouldn't you have to find out what they... Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So how could they tie it in with yeah. So uh, I'm trying to get them into playing more games where they're, they're playing a lot more with each other instead of there's these kind of games that aren't... There's not as much hitting. You know, there's a one kid hitting and the other kids are on the other side and they're trying to catch the ball. Right. Which is good, but then just like the amount of hits you get in the hour, I think like the more the better, you know? So I'm trying to find, I prefer the games where there's like way more interaction where two versus two instead of just one kid playing and then the coach is feeding, you know, and it's more the kind of working each other right. instead of the coach working them. Mm. Right? 
and uh, just kind of they just have to get used to the games and start to like them because it's mm -hmm. a bit of a shift oh we've always done it this way you know and like they don't really have the tennis skills that I want to represent myself you know the parents yeah. are watching like how come they still can't do that they do that for everything I can tell you that from my program yeah I, I need to get past that I still think about uh, you know it's hard that. I know that's really really difficult because they don't usually they get it once a week maybe yeah, at most impressive. and it's difficult because as you and I know, if you're going to be competitive or really get good at anything, you have to put in more time. And that's one thing I think our expats don't have access to. Yeah. That time, they're trying to do a little bit of everything. So, just but one thing. All these sport athletes are okay too. Like, you know, the well, more sports true. you do, it all combines. But the thing is, I think because we, we're, we're working on a time scale that's different, we have to teach in a different way. It can't be okay this step then this step then this step or should, they won't keep their interest yeah. so I try to vary it by putting something difficult in there that I know would take a lot of time but it's going to pique their interest and if they keep on doing this they'll eventually get there mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. make it a difficult like kind skill kind of like a homework kind of no thing? Without, without saying that yeah, yeah. it just comes as a part of the package you're going to learn how to do let's say a serve at this speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they have to build them to it, but you show them. And every mm -hmm. now and then you show them so they get to see it. They say, because it has to be here first, I think. Yeah. That's how I try to yeah. picture it. Make them. Well, and that's why, like you did. That's why adults are easier because they know <laughs> they, where they, they want to go, right? They, they're they like, I'm doing to. this for this reason. But at the yeah. same time, aren't we always teaching that child and that adult? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I see the kid in them. Well, those people running around, they're not running around as adults. They're running <laughs> around as little kids. And I can see it in them. Yeah. They're just as happy when they miss. Yeah. They'll go like this and miss the ball and they go, hey, that oh. little boy, that little, you know, seven-year-old Johnny comes out. Yeah, yeah. I was watching that today. The guy went, but, you know, he just knew he had it went, and missed it completely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> went, <laughs> Ran around the place. He was like, "Oh, Philip's gonna make a comment again." <laughs> so yeah, I want to be more. I keep every time I have like a big group of kids, and I go home. It's okay, just be the fun, be more fun. Like make they the smiles are the, the key. The smile sure. and the running. Like make sure they get a good workout. They're not running as much as they used to these days. That's They're right. I've hybrid had, schedules and I've had to do that too. I have my kids run around the gym, but not that many times. I let them run around because they're not getting that that circulation. They're just yeah, it's They're, really, just yeah, recently, I mean, just since this uh, state of emergency, mm -hmm. you know, I have them come onto the court and we do some fun games and it's like the energy levels is so crazy, like as if they've been locked <laughs> in a box for the no, last three no, days. Cause what's know? Happened, no, because what's happening, the parents are giving them chocolate just before they, before they <laughs> maybe, come to you. Maybe. They give them a bowl full of, I had yeah. a little girl come to my class once and it tickled me so much early in the morning and she came in, she was, I love this class, I love, I love it. And I said, what'd you eat? She said, chocolate, chocolate <laughs> cereal. Every time she get sugar high like you wouldn't believe. Mm. So sometimes they come in, it's like that. And I'll ask them, what did you have to eat? Yeah. And they say, candy bar. And then by the end of the class, it's like. <laughs> they all, yeah, that crash yeah, yeah, yeah. comes and they don't, can't wait to get home. Okay. Yes, yeah. that's interesting. But I think, it's, don't you find it kind of good that you have to work with from children up to adults? It makes you appreciate both, yeah, yeah, I think, in a way. Sure. For sure. I mean. And I mean, that's, uh, you know, back to, I was doing that modeling for a while, mm -hmm. but the tennis is like, there's just, I thought I knew every, you know, you think you know a lot about the sport and then, but there's just so much still to learn all the time. And uh, I feel like I'm still kind of, there's total education every time I'm on the court, you know, and I'm teaching these people and then the way they respond to it and the way yeah, that wow. you know it's like oh man like maybe for this type of person like i gotta do it this way or this is working so i still have a lot a lot to learn and that's yeah. why i want to get better you know and when with my previous work it was kind of uh you know i show up and my, a friend of mine who was like a top international supermodel at one point he's like oh our job is to show up on time and not drunk <laughs> that's right that's right that's like, right oh gosh. and look reasonable not have yeah, been yeah, beat yeah. up the night before yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all it's like well that's like, i think i went to college for a different reason <laughs> and so that's interesting so what are some of the things that you feel like well, i've heard some people speaking other people the aha moment and stuff like that mm -hmm. what are some of the times when you thought like why well, i never saw it that way Oh, you know, I get that all, all the time. Nate, okay, what, what happened recently like that? Mm. You're working with someone in... Actually, a lot with discussions with Alan because uh, he has like a, 
a different older way of teaching, right? Like he's 70 and he went through a different generation of tennis and coaching and that was much more like rigid. And then like, oh, well, you know, players are doing it this way now and I don't think that's the best way to teach it. And we discuss and then, you know, then there's times when I'll have a student be like, yeah, I'll say exactly what Alan will say right now. You know, like there's a reason he, Alan has his ways. He's been doing it for 35 years. He knows what he's talking about. And I was like, uh, kind of stubborn or arrogant thinking, oh, I can make this go faster and smoother without going through those steps or without mm-hmm. like doing it the way. But he knew how to let you have your way so you could find out. Yeah. yeah. You can, and it's unfortunate in our profession, I think with almost anything, you only learn through your failures. Yeah. When you're succeeding, you think you know it all, as you said. Yeah. When you're succeeding or if you only think about your successes, it's those times that it was difficult and then you found a way that it worked. It's like putting together a puzzle, mm. you know, until you can't do it and you figure it out, it starts to stick. I got it now. But I worry because my failures are my students having like a kink in their tennis game for the rest of their life. Like, well, my coach told me this and I suck forever. And it's like, ah, like I don't want that. But Ellen was telling me when he was here, he was saying that it's changed so much. It has, it has. The game has changed a lot. So then with that thought, won't it continue to? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Because the equipment's going to change, yeah. and that's what helped it to change from yeah. those wooden yeah. <laughs> rackets to the lighter ones now and a bigger face. And, and the string is a lot more poppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. see? Mm. And the balls, too. I think they've probably made form those differently, too. Yeah, probably. Right? Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the whole grips thing is because the ball bounces higher, so you know how we get the most efficient stroke at a higher point is why the grips kind of start to get closed like it's you know, the racket differently see i don't know that i don't know any of that but that's interesting and that's why actually now they're we have different balls for different age kids so they don't bounce as high so they don't get bad habits of like oh there's a bouncing over their head and so they okay, learn okay. the right technique with a lower bouncing ball which uh-huh. in my age they didn't have okay they didn't need to yeah mm-hmm. well no no they it just didn't exist there was no option of like the under seven year old ball, the eight year old ball, like which now it's like kind of was developed, kind of it's a good business as well, but it's, uh, you know, is effective. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Faster. Oh. And at the beginning too, I used to be like, oh, come on, like, you know, I'm, in my day we didn't have that. He was just, he's, you know, yeah, yeah. using different balls for different age, and I was like, ah, you're yeah, going to yeah, use this really ball, and this is the ball you're going to learn with. Yeah, right. the Gorn Borg learned that way. You're gonna... <laughs> But uh, so now, yeah, those balls, it makes a difference. And I've seen this, I've seen this advertised where they have the thing you put down, you go out in the street and the ball's on a string. Does that work? Can it? Because oh, it doesn't. Yes, but there's ones that I like more now where the, the ball is actually fixed and it's spin. So you can hit it and the thing kind of is like on a it's rod. on a, a rod yeah a rod that oh, kind okay. of bends oh okay and you can keep hitting it oh so it doesn't with the string it can go anywhere yeah and it's not going to come back go anywhere yeah and it's okay, a little more you. harder to actually you have to be really really you're good really good to, to make if you can do that you're already good yeah, yeah. because like it's all of a sudden it's going out you know and you get yeah, frustrated yeah, and you yeah. throw the thing away so the one now is like uh you can actually work on spin so you can make the ball spin so it's like spinning on an axis oh wow yeah you put english on it okay yeah yeah which is kind wow. of the hard part of figuring out the racket, how to make the rack, the ball spin. And but you can't give it undercut, though. Uh, that no, would be hard. Yeah, right. You'd, you'd, hit, you'd hit the rod. There's yeah, no way to yeah. do that. Yeah. So you can't slow the ball down. You can just spin it. Uh, from, yeah, but it, yeah. it's kind of most people's, like the top spin is like the... The one you, they the want to get. Because that keeps it low to the yeah, net. Yeah, the, the keeps spin it low. kind of uh, Brings pulls it down. the ball down. And right. you can excel, keep accelerating harder without worrying about missing as much. Yeah. So like, you know, when people are just learning one grip and it starts flying out, yeah. either you hit it lower and it's just like barely over the net, you have a right, right, right. air or you can... hit it softer. Right. Whereas when you learn to spin, you can keep swinging harder yeah, without worrying about missing. And yeah. putting it over, yeah. yeah well, yeah. see, I play table tennis. I used oh, to, yeah. I like table tennis. Same, same process, basically. It's just closer. Yeah. And you, you know, yeah. it's a little bit different. And same, you know, getting to the point of spinning in table tennis is That's like right. another level. It's like, sure is. yeah, I'm good at, yeah, I'm yeah, good yeah. at this. Yeah, yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, right. And some guys goes like that and like, oh man, yeah. You never said you were real Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Or he puts English under this way and you think it's going to go that way and goes this way yeah. and you go, what? And it's like not even fine with those right, guys. Right, like, right. oh, the hardcore guys. Uh, I don't That's know. Right. Do you ever play, you play table tennis too? Oh, well, no, I did. Like, and same, uh, just like the, the like flat just stuff, flat right? stuff, okay. Right. Because at tennis tournaments, there's always a table tennis. On the uh, side. Yeah, and when you're waiting for your match and your buddies are just okay. wasting time hitting. So I've spent 
hours, countless hours, just hitting ping pong balls, yeah? Okay. But then I once entered a tournament when I was in college just because I thought I was And good. got killed. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> I got crushed. You said, they're not playing the same game. But it was the right. same badminton. Oh, I thought it was decent badminton. You play someone who's real, it's like, Jesus. It's really good. It's not the same. <laughs> it is. It's completely different. Yeah, yeah. But you said you got to a level, so tell me a little bit more about your competitive years. You got to a level to where you were actually competitive. I mean, you were competing at a high level? I was in, in college tennis, like Division One. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that's also, I'm very passionate about coaching because um, when I was, when I transferred to my new college, uh, so it was like a Big Ten, mm -hmm. and my coach there tried to tweak my game. Was like, this in Texas? Uh, I was in no. Texas first. Okay. Um, my first two years in the southern, like very south near Mexico, and then I went to Indiana for okay. um, college. For college, Purdue okay. University. Yeah. Purdue, okay. Yeah. Wow. And so my coach kind of changed my game, and it just never clicked. Like, I never figured it out, and it made me severely inconsistent and, like, killed my confidence. And, like, so we we're going to try this, and it didn't work, and then we never fixed it. So the whole, my whole time, I had, like, no confidence in my forehand, basically, oh, wow. in college. And it was a uh, kind of thing, like, you know, coaches are really lot, big impact. Tell me about it. It was yeah. just like a teacher. Same thing. Yeah. And that's why I was asking you earlier, how many teachers have inspired you in your life? And you said maybe two or three. And mm. I said, how many have you had? Mm. So what were the other ones doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the idea. What, were the other what, so. what was your major? Uh, business management. Okay. Yeah. And that's why you have other things going on. Do you mind talking about the other things you have going on? Yeah, sure. Um, well, so I actually did business management and then I wanted to, I was always interested in construction and real estate. So then I studied um, construction management mm -hmm. after that. And I thought I would be in that business. Um, and I actually started working in it even after traveling and even modeling a bit. And then I realized it was, I didn't like it because it was really um, competitive like people always suing each other and my, I had this impression that people always that there's the number one worry in this whole business getting sued because something went wrong and you know this is in the US in Canada in Canada yeah. okay uh, that was just like kind of a, something that I was feeling like I don't do I want to be in this business and the only unless you're a lawyer I felt like you know you're, you're stressed all the time okay uh, maybe it's not the case but or my impression but and uh, you know, I was like, okay, at this time, people are offering to pay me to smile and be happy in Japan. You know, let me try that a little bit longer. And I started dating. You know, who's now my wife, and so it was. Uh, so I'm interested in construction real estate. So I, in, a few years ago, I wanted to get into the Airbnb business because it was just starting. And my wife was conservative, like so she didn't want to do the subletting, which you know, people mm -hmm. were making money renting and right, right, of course, yeah. So that, well, if we're gonna. Um, get into it then I want to own the place or do it legally and do it the right way right, right so right. she kind of we together and she supported the idea that we buy an old place and I renovated it and then I was running an Airbnb for a while okay um, and I'm now on kind of my third renovation so I, these are all in the city well two are in one so renovating I uh, did a whole house and our house that we live in I was adding an extra like separate entrance and stuff because okay. for the Olympics, they're expecting right. the Olympics to come. <laughs> <Still>. <laughs> yeah. Even if it did this year, this is going to be there. Yeah, yeah, they will, but no, yeah, yeah they won't be, be the same. So, oh, and then I have a place in the uh, near the beach. Okay, which I'm beach? Yeah, Where? In Chiba. Chiba. Okay, yeah. I love Chiba. Yeah, I, love I ride my things. bike around the other because it's right there. Yeah. Agua Line, you're there. Yeah, yeah. And you go, you down Bozo. You're down on Bozo the outer, outer, part. outer side? Yeah, like yeah. Katsura, yeah. Katsura? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, All of it's great. Yeah, so I like it out there. And, yeah. and so I wanted to make a, like a location house for shooting. Okay. Like, because I've been doing modeling all these studios. Right. And it's like, oh, it'd be cool. Oh, so you can tell the, oh, so you can have the studios use your place. Yeah. You just put it out. Oh, I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So the, it kind of looks That's like neat. a foreign house, yeah. place, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. I've been in many like that. So that's yeah. what gave me the idea. Um, so yeah, I have that. Kind of, so I'm always working with my hands and at least kind mm -hmm. of building stuff. And so I have the tennis, the modeling, and that going on. That's what you enjoy. And your wife has her dance and anything so else? She, nice? Well, so she tours and choreographs and then has her lessons and she's doing online classes now. Okay. So uh, Online classes? With oh. the dance, yeah. Okay, with the dance, yeah. okay. Yeah. And started recently. With right. This, like, like oh, that's some, right, because of this, you know, yeah. So everything's been yeah. shut down. Has she been going bonkers because of it or is she okay at home? And Um... Everyone's been isolated. Everyone's going a little bonkers, but I, I think, think so. you know, we, 
we had the two little two little kids and they're oh that's great. right they're yeah, yeah. you're spending yeah. more time with them that's yeah, good yeah. so of course yeah. you know sometimes it's tiring but mm-hmm. uh, it was um uh, we we went through it okay but, mm. but uh, yeah, we well, think it's over. You sound talking, talking yeah. as if it's over. <laughs> yeah. We went through it like it's done. I yeah, think. I guess so. It's not even. But the kids are in school, so there's while they weren't in school, right? That's true. Yeah. But I'm wondering. I it's it's kind of like nine eleven in the U S. Yeah. When they changed the inspection in the airports, because I remember the day when you went through and you didn't have to take off your shoes and you could take anything you wanted. Like you know, you could never have. Yeah. You could do anything you wanted, but once they set that in. It's everywhere, and they never took it away. Yeah. There's no more threats, but you still can't take liquid on the planes. I was kidding with someone just today saying that I'm going to try to develop a mask that you wear behind your ear, and you press a button, and it's like um, Iron Man. You know, oh, man. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you think, because it's going to be perm- I have a feeling we're going to be putting masks, we're going to say strain number three, or 800 just came out of something. It mutated wow. in strain number 800. So a few flu, flu is that one. But we always had to get, the, yeah, we had the vaccination. Yeah, so, so, so it's, um, yeah, it's same. I, I hope it's not going to be, it's hard to work all day teaching tennis with a mask on. Because well, you know what it's like without it. I'm looking at kids. They adapt so easily that when I took off my mask with the group of kids that I had worked with before, they said, you look funny, Mr. Lee. They'd never seen me without a mask, and they've learned to read my eyes. So I think the area to go into is to eye cosmetics. We make a lot of money, man. <laughs> eyes cosmetics, but there, there is already a lot of eye yeah. cosmetics. I'm mean, gonna make even more, you know, because it's gonna be, have to be more entertaining. It's like, man, that guy's so happy all the time. Like, His eyes really, are he can happy see you. He can see you. <laughs> have to be something. I'm wondering. Wow. So what are your plans for the, the near future? What do you, th- you plan? So yeah, I really want to build this tennis business up. I really mm-hmm. want to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to get away from the modeling stuff because it's so un... It, like, the schedule's always undetermined. You're always waiting last minute to find out. And I, now that I have kids and a family, I want to have a more stable... Mm-hmm. You plan on having more kids? You have two? We have two, we've talked about three, we don't, haven't decided yet. You have a girl and a boy? A girl and a boy, yeah. Okay. And they're close. They're In um, age? Or yeah, in yeah. age. Um, yeah. Just over three years. Yeah. That's not bad at yeah. all. Yeah. They are playing together, they're really cute. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, kids are tough, man. It's two, you know, a year, two years of barely sleeping, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you. It, it, it ends quick. I can say that now, having gone through it. But it doesn't feel like it's going to when you're going through it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. It's just always being tired, and then like that's like you yeah, feel that. 20, but you know. your whole focus is on there, and like, oh, when else am I gonna have a moment to sit down? You know. But uh, of course, then you miss it. I'm sure when it's older, when they you don't do. need you anymore. Yeah. But no. No. I don't know. <laughs> not not necessarily. Not necessarily. Nah. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think you miss it because if you. If you have it set up in a way where they like to come, my sons come over all the time, so I enjoy that. I think if they didn't, I'd miss it. Mm. I've always wanted them to know that they have a place they can come to. And that, well, you created that. Because I'm, yeah, I need that. Yeah. Wow. Well, look, it's been a nice talking with you, Philip. Yeah, is that This has been we're, good. Yeah. Are we out of time? We did, we didn't know. We did. It's an hour, man. We hit this good. I think it's mm-hmm. been, I think we started at 3.15, I think. Yeah, well, I, yeah. yeah, but I just wanted to say it. Like, yeah, tell me, people yeah. People listening, because... Um, yeah, there, I think there's just a lack of play, like with the tennis, I mm-hmm. think, especially with the COVID now, it's one of the few sports that's still okay, Because right? you're still running your, yeah. matter of fact, you have a waiting list, don't you? Yeah. 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 Which is unbelievable, because even yeah, last year, just... I was teaching one or two people, you know. And like, that's right. They had, a, they had a variety of things to do, but I think now, yeah. and the nice thing is, because the situation's been good and very interesting at the same time, because people are really having to make a decision and good instructors are good instructors you're never going to change that and i find the people that are really good at their profession are doing even better yeah now because people are taking they're not just going anywhere now mm. they're going to places where they say this guy really makes food that i like yeah this guy teaches a way that i'm really learning something because mm. of it or such and such well and you know people something that i talk to our guys about is same as like a, if you're a parent who do you want to teach your kids tennis you know it's like they have to respect and trust you and feel this is a good environment for my children and you know if we can be that it's not only good for the 
the company, good for your business, and it's good to be that person, like that to strive to be the kind of coach that you could, like, that you would want to give your own kids to, right? That's right. That's right. So, am I the kind of coach I want to give my own kids to? Yeah, I can tell you are. I can tell you are. I want to be better though, because yeah. well, that's what it, not, you know, like yeah. It never ends. Yeah, yeah. And that's the, that's what makes a good coach. They always want to get better. Mm-hmm. You're on your way. Thank you. I hope so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. This has been good. (laughs)